Welcome traders to this video brought to you by Admiral Markets. Today's focus is going to be on our currency pairs, of course, with a lot of euro and dollar news last week. And also this week, we have some events to keep an eye on, such as the Greek elections and, of course, also the FOMC statement and meeting minutes that will be released on Wednesday. As always, we're going to take a look at these four pairs. But before we do that, though, this disclaimer is valid. Please be aware that this video is not intended for everyone. To find out if it is, please visit admiralmarketsglobal.com, select your country of residence, and contact an appropriate entity. Also, please be aware of the risks involved are high and may not be suitable for everyone. To find out more, please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor. And this webinar is for educational and informational purposes only. By continuing watching this video, you agree with the disclaimer, and I thank you as always for your attention. As we head into the last week of January, in fact, we say that so far this month's January candle has been from high to low a whopping thousand pips, which is by far the largest uh, monthly candle of this downtrend so far. If you look since May 2014, we've not had such a big candle as so far this one. Assuming that at the end of the, this month, the candle doesn't close all too high and we don't have a big wick at the bottom, this certainly looks bullish, or does it? Let's take a look at previous examples. We do see here, actually, that bigger size candles were close to the turning spot for upside. So could that be actually the case here too? That is the question. In my opinion, not. I think that those bigger downside candles there at that time were in a different environment. We were in a, in a wedge. We were in a correction. And uh, we can see here that this is probably the end of A, and that this is a contracting triangle where we had basically an A, B, and then C, D, and E. And you can see that those turning spots were basically B and D. So I don't think that from a technical point of view, we are not close to, we're not in a wedge anymore. We broke out of the wedge. Anyone who puts a trend line like this can see that definitely. And we also broke out of, of course, the rising wedge here. So we're definitely out of below support. In that case, I think that this is actually more of a continuation signal than a reversal signal. Uh, the context is certainly different. Also, from a fundamental point of view, we have ECB continuing with increased uh, quantitative easing. And USA, actually, and the Fed stopping with quantitative easing program number three. So these fundamentals support the technicals or the other way around. Whatever it is, they support each other. And basically, I would expect more downside looking for the long term under your dollar. What kind of profit target? Well, if we consider this big monthly candle to be the middle candle of the entire downside, then we had 1,900 pips move to the downside prior to this month's high. If we add 1,900 pips to this month's low, then basically we're going to be ending up here at about 92, 93. If we project this basically below this. All right, so that could be the target 92. Well, if we put a fib from here to here, we can see that a more maybe modest target is the parity level at about one, or of course parity is at one, excuse me, at the minus 618, I mean. The minus 618 target is a more modest one than the 92. It's closer, of course. So I think anywhere between 09 and one parity could be the target for this, uh, for this massive uh, downtrend in the long term. Of course, if we zoom into lower time frames, it's going to be interesting to see uh, how far this week could retrace before I would think we get another downside continuation. And if we zoom in from daily to four hour, then basically putting a fib from here to here and looking for a bit of a pullback to the 38.2 to 50 fib is what I'm looking for before the downtrend continuation uh, most likely continues. And I'll be looking for candlestick patterns at these fibs for euro dollar shorts. Now, before we continue with the other pairs, please be aware of the uh, great webinars we have lined up here at Admiral Markets. Today, weekly FX recap with Nenet, and on Wednesday, Tanantala is going to take a look at ad advanced patterns, and then we have Tuesday, Wednesday, the usual trading labs, and then Thursday, we're going to take a look at exotic patterns. So, great lineup. Hope to see you in all of these webinars. Now, looking at the pound dollar, basically the long-term picture here, quite similar. There is one difference I'll show you in a second. But first of all, let's zoom into the one-hour chart. And you can see a very good break of the support trend line there in orange. And we can see prices now at the moment consolidating. I like the, uh, the consolidation. You can see it's a bit of a triangle wedge 
at the moment. And if it spikes up to the 38.2 or the 50 fib, I would be equally interested, especially the 50, where it's basically a hook back to the same uh, broken trend line already. We're definitely interesting to look for candlestick patterns at that particular level. If we then zoom out, out you can see that basically the big consolidation was broken here and price is now maybe hooking back to that broken consolidation for further downside. One of the differences that I want to show you, in fact, and that's a bit difficult to see, let me take off this fib, with the euro dollar is that pound dollar, although moving to the downside almost equally fast, ha does have a difference in, the, in that uh, there is a support level, uh, a monthly bottom at 148. So that is something, of course, to be cautious of. Price could seriously halt at that level and perhaps even bounce. Despite the fact that the monthly chart looks, and especially the monthly candle, I should say, looks very bearish and it's just as bearish as the euro dollar, just a bit smaller though, uh, 650 pips approximately this month, still very strong, the strongest of all that downside so far. It is approaching a bottom that I want to be careful of. Moving on to the dollar yen, one of the differences here with the euro dollar and the dollar yen is the fact that the dollar is gaining a lot of strength against the euro, also quite a lot against the pound, but not against the yen. The dollar and the yen are uh, in, in that regard kind of equal to each other here because we're seeing a contracting wedge probably being built as we speak. If we take a look at the resistance spots like this and then at the support spots like this, you can see that we're making uh, lower highs and higher lows and we're not breaking to any of the sides. So price is moving, going sideways basically, right? It's not breaking to the upside, it's not going to the downside. And uh, well, it's taking quite a while, it could take even longer perhaps. I'll we'll have to keep an eye on these trend lines. For the moment, this consolidation is not that interesting for me to trade, but if it does break to the upside, I would, would be interested in the bullish breakout. And as long as it stays in this uh, triangle, uh, it doesn't uh, seem that appealing. Last but not least, the Aussie versus the US dollar, basically here, again, a downtrend as well. And the daily chart nicely going down with the bearish candles and a break of the kind of smaller consolidation we had uh, for about two, three weeks. So now same recipe basically as the other dollar pairs except the dollar yen. Uh, we're looking at basically a break here and a hook back. You see that moment right there. He's right that hook back up to close to the 50 fib. Maybe I have the fib wrong. Yeah, no, still close to the 50 fib and a fall right down to the minus 1,000 target. So I'm going to move that fib and use this swing high swing low, right? Look for the same pattern. The other, of course, uh, p potential there, possibility is that price makes a bear flag. In that case, it might not get all too high in the correction. And if it then breaks that bear flag, I would be interested in shorting uh, the break of the chart pattern as well. If you're not a big fan of chart patterns or you don't know much about it, then I definitely, um, you know, recommend taking a look at uh, other patterns and you'll find a lot of other patterns in the webinars of Wednesday when Neta takes a look at advanced patterns and on Thursday we take a look at exotic patterns. So hope to see you then. And that wraps up the video here of today, the 26th of January. Please make sure to take a look at Admiral Markets in the social media. I wish you all very happy hunting and good trading and see you all soon. Cheers.